represents Call Human Taxidermy and they are our main partner for, for our channel as we go forward. We go Call Human Taxidermy on all the hunting episodes and then we'll have Fish Tech on all of the fishing episodes. And Uncle Carl, I'm going to let you tell the viewers a little bit about Call Human Taxidermy and what you do. Well, we started that business about 26 years ago. After I left school, that's what I've always wanted to do. I'm passionate about taxidermy, so I don't do taxidermy because I wanted to make money. It's the taxidermy I'm passionate about. And, uh, so since then we've, we've grown the business and we've uh, got another two branches which we talk to start in Port Alfred and uh, we've, we've been blessed and uh, I've, I've given all my son into the business too now so it's, it's, uh, we need to plant the legacy, plant it, it, uh, it works deep for itself. Yeah? Well that's 100% and what I can tell you, I mean you, you mounted the first bush bucket I ever shot which was a special moment and I can see from all the trophies that the guys have taken out here, it's top quality work. So. We, we're trying hard, eh? it's, uh, <laughs> we're trying hard and uh, yeah, we've, you know, we've, we've been through some tough times but yeah, we, it looks like we've, we've uh, been back on top of our game and the last, uh, the COVID has hit this quite a lot but um, it's, it's been great, we need been this. Oh, well, that's exciting to hear because it's going to be busy. The South African side has really been good and we've, we've uh, although 90% of our business is international, um, the, the South Africans have really supported us immensely and they should be some top quality photos. I mean, when I walk through the back you can see that, that's awesome to see. But viewers, what we're going to do, we're going to leave a link on the top here to Uncle Paul's website where you can actually see more about them and go into depth and you can contact them if you've got any trophies you want to have mounted. And what we're going to do now, we're going to let you be in for a little bit of a treat. We're going to take you for a walk around the factory and actually see the process from when your animal comes in till when it comes out. So Uncle Carl, I'm going to let you be in the way on that one. Yeah, let's go to the factory. I'm going to take you guys through, through the little processes, but this is what you see here is a typical international client that's just come in and hunted. And now we've, we, we start the process with the tagging. So every single horn, is tagged and every skull is tagged so you see that they get given a reference number and then every uh, every item of the client is tagged you see that the skulls the capes and then it's photographed and then that's how we start his file off so in other words this is just come in from the customers you, they can either bring it in its natural state or they can bring it boiled whatever. well this has been yeah. uh, this is how we've received it from a yeah. from an outfitting company okay um, and we're now busy with the tagging process now and then it can make its way into the factory from And it goes from here into the factory. Okay, so this, uh, what, what, this is a, a load of zebras, uh, giraffes that are going in. Uh, they're going to be flat rugs. So they'll go into the tanning runs and then they can shave down. We normally shave them on these machines, but these have come uh, through radiation, so we have to shave them by hand. So they shave down and then they, uh, you'll see that this, this is the art, this here, where they actually have to take off all the membranes and all the, the fat and, and all the unnecessary pieces, shave it down, the, 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 the thinner your skin is, the better your detail is going to be on your end product. It's soaked. Yeah. 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 Or do you soak them in? Uh, so, it's, there's different uh, tanning, tanning uh, processes that they, yeah. they go through, so everything goes through a different tanning process. You'll see this is, the, this is the next lot of stuff that's getting mounted. Yeah. So this is a cape, a blue bullibus that's going to be uh, in its final tanning stage. Yeah. And then and then from here we'll yeah. be going through to the... And what is the average life cycle from when it comes in to when it walks out into a trophy? Well, our turnaround time at the moment for, for um, most orders are eight months. Eight months. Eight months from when we receive it until, until it's going But that's due to the actual process. It's the process. Right due to preserve it. 
you know, you, it's like a house, you've got to have a good foundation. It's my first time we're really walking through this in depth. The room we came from is the same room. That's correct, yeah, that's where all the skins get shaved down. Okay, so now I want you to explain where we are now and what happens in here, because I'm, I'm lost. Okay, once are. the skins are shaved down, they then go through the different uh, chemical processes that you see, uh, see behind us. So every drum uh, has got a, is a different stage that skins go through. And I'll spend probably about four weeks going through these different processes. Four weeks? Yeah, so it'll be about four weeks. Um, now, is that four weeks in one drum, or as you take it out, does it dry and then go to the next, or does it go straight to no, the next? So what happens is it gets, uh, like it gets uh, put in the first stage, and, uh, and it will then move along. So, like this, it'll, it'll throw them out. There's some string back skins that are lying here. Yeah. Been, uh, and then that there's got to be shaved down. You'll see all that's got to be shaved off. And then, uh, it will then go to the next process again. So it comes out the drum, you prepare your drum, shave the skin down if it needs to be shaved down, stitch the holes, and then you can move it to the next process. Okay, okay so Carl, what you see here is, uh, is the skin that have come out of the drums over there. Okay. They get stretched and, and toggled on these uh, drying racks. So this is a still wet skin, it's yeah. fully uh, stretched out. All the, all the holes uh, get, um, get all stitched up like this in there now. So they've always got the cut box and they've got the... You see, yes, that's where, they're, they're, where, the, where this one was shot. So now that's all the things that they're busy working on. A bullet hole, it can be a skinning mark, it can yeah. be... It can be a, 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 if we stretch it, and we haven't stretched it, the hole just gets too big. Yeah. So this is the, this is the how it gets stretched out. Okay. And then from there, once it's stretched out, it will look like this over here. Yeah. We'll come back, then they go into the soft knees, and that's like a tumble, a big tumble, and we tumble in soft knees. So, what he's doing now is just he's brushing all the hairs. Uh, I wasn't happy with the, with the way the, the hair's been uh, lying uh, and lifted like that, so he's now brushing the, the hair out. And, 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 and when it dries, it's and it dries the hair straight, uh, be brushed out right, the hair lies nicely on the, on, the, on the end product. And this is now the final stretching part this of the process. This is the final stretching part of the process, yeah. So from there, there's from goats right through to these Damara big sheep, zebra. That's how they, they all get pulled along. Look at the color of the, of the spin back here. You can actually see the lines coming from the body. It's so important to, to uh, we all have good field preparation. Yes, yes, these springbuck skins that have come through the exact same uh, batch, the exact same tanning process. Yes. But you can see this one here doesn't have a mark on it. It's a beautiful skin. Look at that. That is a skin that has not been uh, pipped. You see what, what that you're getting. I've not have there. dragged it in the salt even. Also, but I'll see that is poor uh, salt preparation. So you, that's, but you know what? And then a the client will come in and say, "Why is my skin not looking like that?" Because you haven't salted it right. You haven't taken the time and, and done the, the field preparation correctly. So that's actually a disclaimer to the viewers. When you planning to bring a skin in for taxidermy, just make sure that it's been prepped correctly in the field. Uncle Paul, you can just give a little rundown on how you should actually do that. You know, once once the, once the animal is, the quicker you get the skin off the animal is the most important part. Yeah. Don't let it lie in the sun for, yeah. for a long time. And uh, once you've skinned it, just wash it, wash it out, yeah. um, and, and take the skin and wash it with a, with a, a, a dental solution of salt, about five kgs of salt in 25 liters of water, and a capful of dental. Wash it out. When it stops dripping, put it in the cold room or freezer, and then bring it to the sun. As easy as that. You can't actually then put it into a salt pit like the professional answers that you don't have access to. But okay. if you can get it uh, rid of dirt and bacteria, you've got a no problem. Skin. You won't end up with it. So this is our, this is our trim and patch table and then from there the, the skins uh, that, cut, that you saw stretched out there would come and get would put onto this uh, onto these different uh, tables waiting for connection. So you see that we would do some boonies, a fellow here. So whatever whatever's got a skin goes through the, the taxidermy. Have a look at that. Look how soft that is, it's, it's incredible. And then these are all your mat, uh, mat hogs. Or a back skin. Uh, that's like if they do a shoulder mount here, being popular with the international clients. 
that's, he's done a shoulder mount, yeah. and then that's the back off, which, uh, which is the So they, 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 Stains tag, um, you put the sword and tag in the stainless steel tag. So, uh, this is your, your best plug back skin. There's your tag, um, which you use for a tag once it's come in, and you put the number on the back. So, uh, have a look at that uh, before us do that. That is soft, soft, soft. Like a blanket. And how many weeks does it take now from when this comes in before it's ready to go on this table as a flat skin? You know, the flat skins, once I start working on them, once I start taking the flat skins, like I said, four weeks to five weeks, and then you've got it, 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 you've got it
Buckler's a bit bigger than your box. I think you gotta pull these nails out and start from scratch, eh? No, we're busy, uh, busy manufacturing uh, boxes for a couple of small animals. Uh, I still have to get to that, uh, that box for the buckler. Uh, this thing's got me in a bit of a lock, yeah, Dylan. Don't get out of the thing. <laughs> <laughs> My question is this, which one's a trophy, me or this boy above me? Buddy, I think my beard's a bit better than yours. <laughs> so now that we've had our little walk through the factory and you can actually see the process of where all your... How do I put this? The raw animals come in. I don't know if that's the right word yeah. at all. But like where your actual animal comes in or your cape, whatever it might be. Where it goes in and the whole process, this is where it comes when it's done and we're going to let Bill give us a walkthrough of some of the exotics that they've done and he's going to give you an idea of what they can have to offer and any ideas you've got, you just pose it to them and they'll say yes we can do it. So I mean there's some, like a lot of the time what the clients do is they send us a photo and we try to replicate exactly what the clients uh, want. You know if they want that facial expression yeah. or mouth open, mouth closed, whatever we do it all. Okay, so yeah, we got uh, a full mount bush pig for all the bush pig uh, lovers out there that uh, shoot them like shooting them on bait or with dogs. Um, then we've got uh, porcupine, yeah, full mount porcupine, something different. Um, the guys, every now and again, we get a, a porcupine to do. And then we've got a, a black impala over here, full mount as well, also on the exotic side of things. So Dola, see you've got something interesting here, you've got a full mount ostrich. My question is this, we plucked the bird, how do you put it together? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is so, special, eh? Our guys, our guys that, uh, that mount the birds and the ostriches are really, really good. Um, I mean, to, to get the wings and everything flared out like that, like it would be uh, in the field. Nothing looks out of place. So yeah, it's all... It's all come together on this one. I see they found the right hole for which feather has it. No, they are good. This is a European uh, skull mount uh, where you've got the complete skull uh, bleached out and then put onto a, onto a plug and then, yeah that just hangs up against the wall and it's yeah it's very popular in Europe and some guys don't have a lot of space to, to hang a big trophy and uh, they do a lot of these skull mounts. Carl thanks very much for coming around taking the time out of your busy day and spending a bit of time with us here in the workshop. It's been, it's been wonderful to take you guys around and, and just show you what we do here. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's been, yeah, it's been yeah. very, very good. I'm um, just hoping to see the passion that we're putting into, into everything. Oh yes, I can see it. I mean, <laughs> with the creativity that goes into making. I mean, here's a zebra standing here. I've never had the desire to shoot one. Now I do. I mean, this well, is Africa. Well, you know what? Uh, it's not uh, everyone that comes in. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have a zebra on their list, and they mm -hmm. see this this uh, zebra that they put it on their list to shoot. Let's put it this way: if this doesn't show Africa in one picture and the passion that goes into your work, nothing ever will. And thank you for coming on board with us. Thank you so Look much. Look forward to videos so together. You're not only going to see us together in a video at the taxidermy, but you're going to see us out in the felt together hunting as well. Yes, definitely. And uh, for all your taxidermy needs, if you need to contact anyone, contact All Human Taxidermy. The, the link to their website will be in the description down below. Pop them a call and let it go from there. And you can see there's lots that you can do here.